Well, one of the, the like, first off, we're very fortunate to have these places and f the, the community is fabulous. And to live in a community without cars and uh, with, uh, you know, water, you know, a great beach on one side, a uh, village green where you can play soccer and play baseball, you know, um, clubhouses where we have dances and, you know, and all that stuff is, is really, really fantastic. The, one of the downsides though is, is that we um, own the structure but we don't own the property and so we can't um, sell our houses for a profit. So, there, so we can sell our house to, for the replacement value um, which means if you fix up your house and let's say it's worth $200,000 then when you sell it you sell it for $200,000 there's no speculation. So contrary to places in, in the city where the value just keeps going up and up and up and people you know uh, are becoming instant millionaires because their houses uh, uh, become that valuable that doesn't happen here and it was a rule a regulation that was brought in um, because the it, it, a real strong desire to keep the community um, uh, viable for people with lower incomes so if you have land speculation and house speculation, then it's only the very wealthy who can buy into the community. It's more expensive now than it was when I got in, but um, it's uh, you know um, it's still available for people with moderate incomes. But there's a 500-person list, and so you you put your name on the list, and about five houses uh, exchange hands a year. So if you're number 400 and 98, you know, it's going to be 20 or 30 years before you're even offered a chance to live out here. After after I graduated from York University, uh, I lived in the city for a while in some pretty divey places, and then a friend of mine said um, there was uh, uh, some people out here had were going away to Newfoundland for a year, and they needed someone to take care of their house, and so I was lucky enough to um, be the person who took care of their house for a year. And then, you know, I was, I was out here for a year, um, and, the, and it was very different back then. It was the Wild West, there was no, uh, the city was actively trying to get rid of everybody. We couldn't get building permits, we couldn't get construction materials, we couldn't fix up our houses, and yet everyone was fixing up their house. So there was, uh, but anyway, so I was living, I, that kind of lifestyle really appealed to me. For instance, when I moved into the house, just by chance, it was, in, January in the middle of a snowstorm and the back door had blown open and the living room was full of snow and so when I walked in to the house for the first time never been out here before and you walk into a place and then the living room's full of snow and I said wow this is fantastic and so you know the first thing you do is you shovel the snow out and then you turn the heat on and um, but it was uh, much more rough and ready and that was a pretty fixed up house so uh, some of the places that I've lived in out here were really um, uh, haunted. You know, they were haunted houses. They were no roof, no floor, no windows. And well, I was fortunate enough to get a get one of those kind of houses, and then over the years fix it up. And uh, so it was a kind of a handyman special, in big time. But because I, you know, creative person, um, and uh, worked in construction, you know, it was just great. So I, you know. Make a little money, you spend it on your house. You make a little money, you spend it on your house. And so it all worked out really well.